Shakti and spiritual practitioner. I travel around the world teaching in the different holistic festivals and fairs. I teach meditation, yoga, and spirituality, and about emotional intelligence. So thank you for you guys tuning in either live or whether you're tuning in, um, watching the replay. Welcome to this session. I'm going to be giving a, a live reading to give uh, you guys some guidance from the divine, from our guides uh, about you know, all the collective energies that's going to happen right now for all of us, the cosmic alignments, as well as some uh, to cover all topics from families to relationships to career and health and all your other general questions. So do feel free to ask me your general questions. Uh, may, avoid personal questions. I would like everyone to be able to benefit from this session. Okay, first of all, this will allow more people to come in. I'm going to be... Um, talking about how today, if you notice, it's the 13th of uh, September. It's a Friday the 13th full moon. So what is Friday the 13th? Friday the 13th, people usually equate to bad luck, but actually, you know, that in ancient times, right, in pagan times, 13 was a very lucky number. It was from lucky because of ignorance and the uh, the crusades and all that, they, they turn it, you know, to something unlucky. But Jesus had... 12 disciples, so Jesus plus 12 disciples is actually 13, right? Why 13? 13 because it's actually 13 lunar cycles in a lunar year, in a lunar calendar. All right? And also the uh, the number 13, because usually most women have their menstrual cycles on the 13th of the month. So 13 is actually really a feminine number. It's about the sacred feminine, uh, this about divinity. And so it, it is actually lucky, it's just that you know, due to uh, a lot of fear, ignorance has been changed, right? So the uh, we also at the tail end of the Saturn retrograde. The Saturn retrograde ends on the 18th of September, okay? And usually on the last week of any kind of retrograde, any planetary retrograde is when it's most intense. And Saturn's the planet in charge of karmic contracts, of karmic soul contracts and past life karma, so we are wrapping up, we are closing uh, coming cycles and coming soul contracts. So, you know, this this week from the 9th of uh, September, which is the 999 portal, 9 of, of the ninth day of the ninth month of uh, 2019, right? So 999. So it's exactly nine days from the 9th of September to the 18th of September, which is the final day of the second retrograde. So hang on to your horses, All right? There's a lot of uh, energy is going out there. Okay, so I'm going to pick a general card for all of us right now. Great spirit, uh, remove my ego, make me a pure vessel and conduit for higher dimensional energies to flow through, making me serve the collective right now. All right, so what's the general reading for all of us collectively? Spiritual signs. So look out for, you know, uh, feather, number synchronicities, uh, tune into your messages in your dreams, in your waking state. Look out for the guidance and synchronicities and miracles and blessings everywhere, all right? So tune in all your senses. Uh, you might see, you know, uh, maybe words popping out or your favorite song playing or you smell something that reminds you of someone. So look out for these signs. It's your spirit guides connecting with you, all right? So I'm going to pick a, a, a card for uh, people, all of us right now. What kind of general guidance can you receive? All right, from, from high dimensions for this month of September. Okay, Hermit, it's a time for uh, introspection. This is a major Kana card. It's a time to really tune into your, yourself, you know, uh, take time to yourself, be alone, uh, disconnect from the digital world, from your workplace, and tune in at night, do more meditation, more contemplation, some journaling, some soul searching. So it's a, it's a loner card, but being by yourself, uh, taking time to yourself and to tune in. Okay? So this is uh, a general advice for everyone. Okay, I'm going to tune in for uh, career advice. You see someone asking about career. Right. So again, this is a general reading. It's for everyone who's tuning in. It doesn't matter if you're watching the replay. It's timeless. So it doesn't matter what timing you watch. At the time that you watch, it will serve you, all right? I will not be uh, answering any personal questions, only general ones, because I want this to benefit everyone who's watching right now and watching the replay. 
King of Cups. The King of Cups is a very wise counselor. He's very in tune with his emotions. His great emotional intelligence is very wise. So uh, for all of us, for people thinking, okay, what career direction, right? So maybe you should ask your father, ask your mentor, someone who is already very wise, very experienced in your line of work, who can counsel you and is a good counselor, a good, who can give you good career guidance. So maybe it could be your boss, it could be your mentor, it could be your teacher, it could be your own father. Find this person and they will help propel your career progress and take your pro career development to the next step. Okay, I am using the golden tarot. So it has all golden overlay, all right? Do they have a friend with me? Say hello to uh, Rainbow Unicorn. I received this uh, as a birthday gift. Isn't it cute? <laughs> so, okay, all right. So I'm gonna be picking a card for uh, people going through family issues. Some issues, what has spirits got to say about family issues? Okay. This is the six of wands is about the hero's welcome home. All right. So uh, sometimes when we have a family member who strays from the path, or like a prodigal son, and they leave the family, uh, it's trying to say people who have left are coming back. Right, and you should welcome them back into your arms, into the, uh, the, the, into your, into the home, into the house. So thank you, thank you, Nita, thank you so much for the birthday greetings, and uh, thank you, Sharon, for your question. Sharon wants to know uh, what are twin flames. So twin flames are a very broad and complex subject. Uh, when I first started on this twin flame journey seven, seven to eight years ago. There's honey, anything online. There's, uh, now when you YouTube search Twin Flames, thousands of videos. A Twin Flame is, first of all, ascension, spiritual ascension catalyst. It's a spiritual accelerator. It's your mirror. At the highest order, everyone is Twin Flame because everyone's a mirror reflection of you. Everyone's connected to you as one. So your Twin Flame counterpart is someone you have coming contracts with in, and have other lifetimes with, and you agree to come back in this lifetime to help each other to grow and expand and to heal. And usually when you meet such a counterpart, the, in the intensity of the relationship is very strong. You recognize that you have a spiritual bond. You have a past life connection. And it's very tangible, very obvious. You feel the strong magnetic pull and also the push from each other. All right, so you can't they come in and out of your life, push, pull, push, pull, in and out, separate and unite, separate and unite, and this this is the ebb and flow of such a dynamic a relationship. And the separation is as intense as the coming together. All right, so it's really a, a, a sacred union, and there's a lot of triggering of old wounds, traumas, uh, child inner child woundings, uh, stuff that you have not healed in yourself is coming out, rising to the surface and being re reflected back by the twin flame. It gives you an opportunity to acknowledge, realize and recognize it so that you can work on clearing it. And usually because uh, one twin or both twins are so afraid of this inner self triggering and mirroring by your twin, they run away. So this is why twin flames have a runner chasing dynamic and it allows you to heal a lot of codependency issues, a lot of rejection and abandonment wounds, uh, that were already there before you re-met your counterpart in this lifetime. And some of these wounds were because, you know, karmic ancestral karma uh, or, or childhood wounding because of your parents or, you know, always have been hurt before by someone we love or someone we trust and respect. And we build a lot of walls around us to protect ourselves from being hurt again. And this walls prevents us from giving and receiving love to ourselves and to others. So the twin flame, breaks down this walls, forces you to heal yourself, forces you to go to therapy, to seek help, to clear and purge, release and heal those wounds. Because if you don't heal, it's still in you. And when it's still in you, you suffer greatly, all right? And you project the shadow on the others. That's why it's so important to do this healing work, inner healing work, okay? So, um, all right, let's, let's find out, let's pick a card for Twin Flames, shall we? Okay, great spirit. Uh, for people going through twin flame relationships and dynamics right now, what can they do? All right, what can they do about it? What can they do? Improve? Okay, right. 
twins, right? Number two, two of wands. Okay, your twin is always a part of you and never be when always, even if they're separated from you. This card is about ensuring that you focus on yourself. One hand, grounded, focusing on you, while your twin flame is always in the background, right? Make yourself, your self-healing, your self-development, your priority. The twin flame can carry romantic connotations, even, it can even be a sexual relationship. But the romance and sexual components are just a happy byproduct and not the primary aim of a twin flame relationship. Okay, so you should, you should not focus on the other person, but on you, and as a result, your twin flame merges with you. Okay, you exactly explain exactly the guy I met in May, very dynamic when we are together and we are apart. He keeps coming and going. Yes, Sharon, that's how a twin flame relationship is, right? They are a very high level relationship. They are the soulmates of all soulmates. Okay, so uh, there's a question as well. Are we likely to know our twin flame when we meet them in this lifetime? It's a really strong inner knowing. It's a strong soul recognition. Uh, you will be very clear. But, you know, if it brings about uh, a lot of uh, triggering, like I said, you're triggered. There's always uh, one of the signs that you've met a twin flame. Uh, a twin flame partner can be the same sex. Uh, even a parent can be a twin flame. It's possible. Whoever triggers you to do your inner soul work. Um, there are a lot of similarities between twin flame dynamics and relationships. And even though each journey is unique to on its own. All right. So uh, people going through that should really uh, focus on the self and hold space for the twin flame counterpart to come and go. All right. If they want to leave, let them leave. Okay. So what are the changes happening in this coming month that will affect us? Okay, let's, let's, let's ask spirit, all right? What are the changes? Oh, talking about twin flames. A lot of us are going to meet our twin flames this month of September. If you're not already met your twin flame, you're going to finally meet it or reunite with your twin flame who has left uh, because they do come and go in and out of your life all the time. So it's a time for unions and reunions, a time for celebrating friendships, partnerships, unions, uh, uh, romance in all its forms. Okay, so this is what this month is going to bring uh, about. Cuts don't lie. Okay, and how do we uh, better uh, flow this soulmate, coming partners and twin flame relationships? Can you give us more tips and answers with spirit? Ooh, this your relationships teaches you. This is what this card is about. Uh, you teach them and they teach you. It's a chance for growing, learning, processing, integration. So uh, accept it when it comes. Uh, see what that lesson has to show you. See what this relationship or any kind of relationship has to teach you, has to allow you to grow. Okay, I'm going to pick a card now for health. People going through health issues, how can they improve their, their general health with spirit? How do people work on their illnesses and health issues that they have? What can they do? All right. Strength. You have the strength, the power, the fortitude, the gravity, and the magnitude in you to cure any disease. It's all placebo. It's mind over matter, right? So when there are sometimes people die of very small things like pneumonia because they lost the will to live. So if you have a very, very strong will to want to heal, to want to uh, you know, recover, you will. And that's why some people, when the doctor goes, Oh, I'm so sorry, you have terminal illness, you have three months to live, and yet the person said, no, I want to live. I, I, I can't die. I have family depending on me. I, I'm not done yet. I, I want so badly to survive. And then they will and they command their cells and their body to repair, rejuvenate, and heal and recover. So it's how strong is your will to live? How strong is your will to recover? You have it in you, right? So it's like taming the inner lion, right? So it's also about inner healing. All right, taming the inner demon in you and that helps in the healing process. So this is what people need to do if you're going through health issues. Have that strong will to live, have the strong will to recover, to find it within yourself. All right, and there's a placebo effect. Okay, How does the full moon change our lives of frequencies this month? Okay, let's ask spirit. What is this particular full moon for today? What, what's so special? Oh, this card flew up. Whew. This is the Queen of Pentacles. It's about connection to Earth, connection to Mother Earth, the Mother Gaia. 
connection to nature, being more grounded. So this is a chance for us to be more in tune with nature, with our physical bodies, with Mother Earth, and, and caring for our physical material needs and requirements as a human being. So are you eating well? Are you exercising? Are you having enough water? Are you uh, spending time in nature? Uh, yes, this is connect, connecting to Mother Earth and, your, and being more grounded. So this, this full moon allows us to tune into the inner, ma, the inner mother, the, the mother of mother of energies. All right? Any more general questions that people have? Might have? Okay, let's ask for uh, so we've done family, we've done career, we've done relationship or health, and we've done romantic twin flame relationships. Uh, let's see what else. Uh, what else is out there? How about people struggling in monetary and uh, financial issues and problems? What has Great Spirit got to say? What can you do if you are uh, short on money and you're struggling in finances? What has Spirit got to say about this? Who? Queen of Cups. Queen of Cups is uh, is the counterpart to the King of Cups. The first card that I drew, all right, is about um, connecting to uh, your sacred feminine self. Right, giving yourself the self love. Uh, she's she's also very wise. She's very emotionally intelligent. So finances is related to your emotional well being. This is what this card is saying. So if you take stock of your emotions, see what emotions you break down the word is energy emotion. Our emotions and our feelings are far stronger than our thoughts. So when you combine clarity of thought with strong emotional output. You and, and add it with inspired action in physical, you manifest abundance. So, it's this in, in being in tune with emotions is a create powerful creative manifestation tool, right? Far stronger because, for example, our heart sends out uh, uh, electromagnetic field 5,000 times stronger than the brain, hence, our feelings and energies of so, you know, emotional energy. Uh, is stronger than thoughts in creating and manifesting whatever you want. So what you're feeling is key to, to manifestation. So make sure you're feeling good feelings. When you're feeling something negative, right? Emotion, motion. So allow it to come out, release and purge. Nothing, you hold on to nothing, not even your breath. So whether a thought is positive or negative or whether a feeling is positive or negative, understand everything is temporal, everything is uh, short-lived, it will only be temporal, so if it's negative, release it, all right? And then the negative allows you to, to feel, uh, to buy its contrast, what you prefer, okay? So emotion, E equals MC squared, energy is, is mass times the speed of light squared. And that's, that's uh, a powerful formula for creating and manifesting into reality. Everything that you want, including money. So flow those the emotions. Be aware, acknowledge of those emotions, and check your emotions. Okay. Are there any more frequency changes happening this month coming? All right. Uh, so this week in particular, especially today, because it's the mid autumn full moon on the thirteenth Friday, thirteenth. So you a lot, a lot of you might have wacky dreams or feeling extra emotional. I know I am. I was definitely feeling very emotional the past few days. Uh, usually full moons affect me more than new moons. Uh, so I'm not sure about you guys, but I'm feeling it. Uh, so again, I acknowledge my feelings, I, I observe them, and then I let it go. All right, so, okay, but anyway, what other uh, changes are there? So, ooh, lots of changes, lots of transformation, lots of shakes up, shake ups happening for us right now, okay? Uh, Thank you, Sarah, for your questions. But you know, I'm not I'm not uh, accepting any personal questions this time. Just general questions. So keep your questions general, so that everyone, including yourself, can benefit. So anyone has a general question for me, or rather for spirit to answer. But you know what? I'm just gonna I'm just gonna help you this time, right? Because you have been a regular on my channel. So this is for Sarah. Oh, the very first cut I picked up this session, and I, this is the second time this has appeared. The King of Cups. Tune in to your feelings, your emotional intelligence. Seek out that mentor, that counselor. Get in touch with your, uh, improve the relationship with your father. That's what you need, Sarah. Okay. Okay. Uh, 
Jessica, you you like a cut as well? Okay, this cut for Jessica. General cut for Jessica. You got the opposite. You got the king as well. Another king, king of pentacles. Uh, he's a great businessman. Maybe he's your husband who is a good businessman or or or, or a father figure or teacher mentor. Uh, get in touch with this, or maybe you are this person. You're very good at business. You're you're good at making money, and people seek you out. All right. All right, you're most welcome, sir. So come on, guys, ask me a general question that anyone, everyone can benefit. Sarah, Sharon, ask me a question. General, so even if people watching the replay, they can benefit. But meanwhile, what have I covered? I've covered career, relationships, family, finances, health. Um, cut, please, Pauline. Okay, this cut's for Pauline. Pauline, what's the energies? Ace of Cups, new love is coming to your life. Be, again, a lots of cups, lots of uh, overflowing emotions. Okay, okay. This is for Andrea. Andrea, you got second time. This is appearing. This is the Queen of Pentacles. Get in touch with nature. In fact, a lot of these are very general uh, guidance, right? All of us should be uh, connected to our uh, to Mother Earth, to Mother Nature. Recycle more. You know, spend more time with, with animals and plants. Uh, eat more healthily. I will not answer any personal questions because I want people to benefit. So enough of uh, enough personal questions for now. Uh, we'll, we'll only general questions, please. Because again, if you are watching the replay, you don't want to listen to listen to me uh, doing personal card readings, right? Because uh, about a thousand people watch this replaying, so I want you to benefit everyone who watches this. That's why, right? So we we should not be selfish, we shouldn't be self-centered. We, we want this to uh, 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 benefit uh, and be advantages to everyone watching, okay? So to you, to me, to all. And that's the most fair. All right, so this is just collective energies. If you want personal questions, please book a re private session with either myself or any other readers that you might resonate with, all right? Because people like myself, we do this full-time for a living, and so when we have the opportunity to serve our clients, the abundance thing that is given to us allows us to continue this good work or service to continue to serve the collective. What's the best, that's the best time to make financial decisions in this coming month? Okay, let's, let's get Spirit to answer this question. Who that time this cup. This card has appeared. This is not coincidence. And usually when I do live sessions like this, there's many repeated cards. As you regulars to my channel will know. All right. So a good time is the time when you connect to that mentor, to that wise counselor in your life. So who is this fatherly figure, fatherly mentor, a counselor, a teacher that you look up to, wise and elderly? When, the moment you seek him out is the good time that the finances will close. Seek him out for financial Advice, that's it. That's what this card is saying. That's the that's that good time. No coincidence for it to come three times in a row, right? Okay, so let's ask spirit. Uh, you know, I wanted to share about this story. Uh, my best friend, he went to the Massachusetts Institute of Technology recently to take up uh, to listen to a talk by one of the top climate change scientists in the world. And this guy, he broke down in the middle of his lecture and he cried because he said he dedicated his entire life, decades of his life, to his work. But not enough is being done. And so he couldn't convince world leaders and United Nations to, to do enough about climate change and the environment. He drafted the uh, Paris uh, Protocol that replaces the uh, uh, he, sorry, he drafted the Paris Agreement that replaces the earlier uh, Kyoto Protocol. And he says that, you know, the uh, even if all the world leaders and governments were to agree to collaborate right now about climate change, not enough is being done. And it's too late, according to him. Our global temperatures will rise by 3.5 degrees Celsius, and the threshold for sustainable life on this planet is 2.5. According to him, with the data and research he showed, with the proof, he says, in as early as 20 to 30 years, low-lying cities like uh, Bangkok, Shanghai, Venice, Maldives will be submerged in water. 
I have a slightly different take. I would think that I believe that Mother Earth has a way of rejuvenating and regenerating itself if we do our part. So it has to be a bottom up from the grassroots, an initiative from the bottom up, not from the top down. Of course, it'd be great if our governments place legislations and laws to help. But it really has to be to play out each of us. We want to change the world, we change ourselves first, right? So we each play our part by not using straw, plastic straws, uh, re recycling more, reducing waste, being vegan and vegetarian because it's less harmful to the environment, uh, eliminating single use plastics, using as little plastics as we can, uh, and really taking care of the earth. And then we're helping the earth. At the very least, we'll slow down because in 2030, we're still around. It's getting hotter and hotter uh, every year. And right, even now, there's a haze outside here in Singapore. Extremely hazy, you can smell the smoke in the air, it's affecting your, making your eyes red. And because Indonesia is burning a lot of forests, and, that, and you know, also, as you know, guys, you know, the Amazon is burning too, right? So, those, uh, those uh, smoke flies over to Malaysia and Singapore every year, it happens it's around this time, uh, and it's very bad for the environment. You're burning down trees, uh, so it's really bad. So, let's ask Spirit what can we do to, uh, to help the environment, help Mother Earth? Heal. All right. Okay. This is the card of lovers. Love the environment. Treat the environment and the earth like your own self, like your lover. Right. So, so starts with self love by loving yourself, treating yourself nice, and you treat the, the mother earth, mother nature kind, and, and 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 learn to love the topic. Love the topic. Love to teach others the topic how they can be more environmentally sustainable, and love the earth that you're on is the only home we have other than this physical body. Love this up enough to do something. Okay? So uh, I have a question here. How can we connect better with our guides and angels? Great spirit and angels and spirit guides. How can everyone here better connect with you guys? All right. So this look at this card, right? This card's about feeling like a little bit uh, Blinded, blindfolded, right? Blinded, you have two options. Okay, so I'm going to put two extra cards, right? Because it's trying to say there's no straight answer. There's two, there's two separate answers that people can take. Okay, so I'm going to pick two cards. Uh, sorry. Okay, these are the two cards I picked. The first card is, this card in relation to this question is, uh, when, when Jesus, sorry, this card, sorry, this card first, Jesus said, when two or more are gathered in my name, so am I there in your midst. So when you, you don't have to do this alone. Understand that you are actually surrounded by lots of angelic guides. But when you combine with your physical friends, to when you guys pray together, meditate together, do any kind of spiritual work together, one and one equals to three, not two. So stronger. So you, um, so you can connect uh, through oracles, through even the, the tarot, which I'm using, your pendulum, uh, a Ouija board, whatever floats your boat, right? And so when you use not more, when you more than one person is easier. There's less doubts. There's less resistance. So you can don't need to do this alone. You can you can connect your angels and guides in, in, in a in a collective, in a congregation, in a gathering. And this is when it's strongest when more angels come around, right? Because you're combining everyone's spirit gets together. The other thing is to you see the Queen of Wands is about. Uh, Aligning with your passion, your life purpose, your soul mission, your soul blueprint. When you are in alignment and very clear about what you are put here on earth to do, your angels and guides are listening and they guide you and they assist you uh, even more. So they help us most when we are clear about what we want and we are doing what we are placed on earth to do, what we are reincarnated to do, what we are meant to do when we are doing our soul mission, our soul work, and we are serving the collective. So this is when... Uh, it's the most, uh, most powerful when guides help us the most and make themselves most tangibly uh, obvious to us through their energies. How can we combine a new spiritual wave happening with the traditional religious view? Okay. Good question. All right. So, the Four of Cups is about, uh, you, you know, saying that, okay, you really have three cups, I give you a fourth, and you kind of like, uh, same old, same old. Understand what this card is trying to say. Understand that spirituality is a very big umbrella. Religion is only a small subset of what spirituality is. The spiritual lifestyle is not just about 
uh, doing yoga asana poses uh, or doing meditation or uh, just you know uh, or rituals and religious practices those are just a small portion of what spirituality is spirituality is an intrinsic connection to everything and all things right it's as about divinity as it's about being grounded in our physicality. So we have to be as physically connected and grounded in our body as we're connected to our divine selves. And this is what true, uh, true spirituality is all encompassing. So it encompasses religion and religion is man's attempt to be more spiritual, but spirituality is every, it's the profound and the profane. It's the yin and the yang, it's the dark and light. We no exception. So you need to do 50% light work, which is your meditation, your yoga, your breath work. You need 50% shadow work, which is therapy, uh, tuning into your darkness, accepting your human size, your flaws, your insecurities, your imperfections, your weight, the, your looks, the shadow work. Really, uh, you know, forgiving yourself, that's shadow work too. Right? Forgiving those that have hurt you, feeling all your emotions, we, are, we came from perfection, we came from unconditional love, we came to experience the opposite of that so that we can flow back and know that we are have, and always have been eternal, infinite spirits. All right? So Monica asks, when you had a reading and you are and you are told you have a guide, an angel, plus pass over loved ones by your side, which ones does which job and how important are they? I think they all work in tandem. They come in and out in your lives in different cycles. Sometimes you have more guys, sometimes you have less, depending on which uh, area, uh, which uh, phase in your life you are at, all right? Uh, so there's no clear-cut answer to that, you know, it, 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 and it doesn't really uh, matter. I think there are always, there's always more non-physically incarnated beings than there are physically incarnated ones like us, okay? So, but anyway, I'll take a general cut with that. You see, this is a beautiful angel, temperance, right? So uh, temperance is... When you are learning to balance all aspects of life, body, mind, heart, and soul, because the spirit, we are body, mind, heart, and soul combined. You need everything in holistic balance, all your chakras in balance. And that's when we experience our spirit guides more when we're in that alignment. Okay? It's not all material or not all spiritual. This is what Buddha did. He did both extremes. He said, be the middle part, middle part, we need balance. All right? Tamara, I will not be answering any personal questions, just uh, general questions that everyone can benefit, including yourself. All right? But I'll be nice. I'll give you a general card for, your, for you. Second time, this card has appeared. King of Pentacles. You're either a very good businessman or you're married to one or someone like this will come to your life or you're meant to connect to someone like this who is a good businessman, good at money, making money, and good with his finances. Right. Why is everyone asking me about pregnancy, whether they'll get pregnant? In fact, actually, remember I told you guys about that top, that top climate change scientist? If, maybe, I should, uh, maybe you guys should Google and watch that video, uh, right? Uh, it's on YouTube. Uh, it's his lecture in, in, the, in, in MIT about climate change. I can't remember his name. But one of his suggestions on how we as a wasteful human race can help the earth rejuvenate, revitalize, regenerate uh, itself is because we have too many humans, too many unconscious, unawakened humans who are perjuring the resources and overspending the resources of this planet. All right, The planet cannot withstand so many human beings who are not doing their part to make this world a better place. So one of his suggestions is stop making babies, right? If you want a kid, go adopt. There's more than enough children in the world already. Why do you want to uh, put out another child on, onto this world that's really overburdened and overpopulated, right? So I see his point. If you really feel like it's in your soul's alignment and soul mission to bring out a child and bring it soul responsibility, make sure that you exhaust your options, try to adopt first. It's kind of like a pet, right? Adopt, a, a, adopt a, from a pound before. There's so many cute animals needing new homes rather than go buying, go, like rather than buying one, right? So bringing a child in the world is a heavy responsibility. Make sure that you're really tuned in and make sure you're truly ready. Most people, you know, almost everyone I know have issues with their parents. 
your child will go through growing pains. As a teenager is going to hate, learn, going to go through a phase of hating you as a parent. All right. So make sure you and the ancestral karma heal the pain instead, so that it doesn't get go down to your children. We, you be the generation that stops it. All right. Stops that. Uh, that pain that our ancestors see our ancestors went through a lot of war and hardship so they taught a lot of negative beliefs and lack to our, our, our grandparents our grandparents taught our parents our parents taught us and our parents parented us the way they were parented by their parents and forefathers and so a lot of it is a lot of toxic masculinity lack of love lack of adoration people, people have a lot of abandonment wounds and rejections and, and they become really bad usually they're very bad parents themselves and then we have kids that kids suffer and then the, those kids when they grow up to adults they, they end up bearing children and treating their kids the same way their parents did to them and then so far and so forth you have to heal your wounds and make sure that you can be a good parent before you you choose to be one always ask yourself if you had a daughter or son would you want that daughter or son to date someone like you or marry someone like you and the answer is no then you you got to be better and do that shadow work and the healing. All right. I work on myself every day and the self development. Even therapists like me, we have our own therapists because we are all, all of us have blind spots. Okay. KBS, how are you tonight? I'm, I'm, I'm doing great. Thank you. All right. This is cut for you, KB, for being so nice. All right. Five of Swords is about empty victory. So people walk out of your life, so, uh, but you don't feel good about it. So just try not to have small, petty, minor disagreements with people so much, right? Let small things go, let it go, release them. Okay, so so uh, war and fighting has always been a way to keep the population down, even in a race or country. Yeah, the, the planet has a way of culling the population with, with, with natural disasters as well. Okay, so our countries in need of people as we have large population, small population, uh, large po area and small population. That's true in Australia and also true for Sing Singapore. Is, 5.3 million now. The government wants it to be like 6.6 .6 or 6.8. It's ridiculous. It feels overcrowded already as it is. We're not making enough babies according to the government. But I'm talking about the whole world, the whole world uh, as a whole. We are reaching close to 8 billion people on this planet. It's a lot of human beings littering, throwing plastics in the ocean. I saw a sign recently and it said, Animals do not litter or waste. Only human beings throw litter and trash this planet. Act like an animal. Because these animals don't litter and don't throw trash. Only humans do. So act like an animal. Wow, that really hit me hard, right? Humans are worse than animals. We are animals, yet we are worse than animals. Okay, this is a general collective reading. Lina, for everyone who is watching. Are these natural disasters a sign of manifestation of global change? It's probably both. It's probably the energies of a collective consciousness that has created it. So this card reminds us to not take life so seriously. Make sure you have some fun once in a while. Don't even take spirituality so seriously. You laugh more, have more fun, tune into the inner child. Uh, hear the needs of your wounded child. Your inner child needs you. Okay? So, natural disasters are, are co-created, right? For example, the heating up of this planet causes more hurricanes and typhoons and tornadoes. Right? It's very destructive. Okay? So, for those of you who miss, who just uh, tune in and miss... The first half, you can always rewatch the replay. All right. Yeah, so I'm taking general questions that will impact everyone and help assist everyone right now. Thank you for uh, tuning in. Uh, the last time we were trying to uh, get online uh, last Saturday, but the internet connection wasn't strong enough for the host. So we had to postpone it to today. So thank you for uh, coming in today. So I'm going to pick three cards for all of us watching and all of us re-watching and who are watching later. What can uh, 
uh, the three cards of the past, present, future energies, all right? In the past, from the top of the deck, the lovers, second time this card disappeared. So the, we were uh, having a lot of uh, time spending with love partners, romantic partners, relationships. In the past of the past affecting us, new love is coming in. So old love has ended. Perhaps we just ended with an ex partner, ex husband, ex lover, whatever. That new love is coming and overflowing into our life right now in the present moment and the bottom of the deck. However, this new love will start off in the new future being very disharmonic and very unbalanced. So there's a bit of a power struggle here, as you can see, a bit of minor fighting, uh, especially in or disagreements, minor, very minor fights and conflicts and disagreements, especially in uh, in the area of uh, shared purpose, shared life purpose, or preferences and likes and dislikes. Okay. Are there times in the coming month that's called relationships and communication? Hmm. Well, let's answer this. Right, next, from this month to next month, it's a time for, uh, see, you're being alone, right? Time for, and the, remember that card that I picked was about the hermit. It's time for in, being, being by yourself, even if you're in a relationship, spending a lot of time by yourself uh, to contemplate, rest and relax. We need time to ourselves even, you know, uh, to recharge, to regenerate, to recalibrate. Especially if when we're in a relationship, we need our own space. Is this about it? Owning your own space? Have healthy boundaries? Uh, so you've got to fill your own cup first before you can give to someone else. So uh, it's a good time for being clear with what you want and what you need before you can even communicate it to a spouse, a partner, or whatever kind of relationship you're talking about in your life, okay? So I have 15 minutes left. Anyone has a very good general question for me? Okay, great spirit. It seems like uh, there's a lot of talk about relationships, uh, since the cup of new love came in, right? Um, for the new love, people who are going to meet their twin flames, their divine partners, uh, if they are soulmates, their coming partners, this, all these new relationships that's coming in. What do you have to tell us? How can we better flow these relationships? Nine of Cups is about, you know, understanding it. A lot of us have spent time uh, being very independent, but the energy of being egocentric and self-centered, selfish, and in the, overly independent uh, is also an imbalance. The opposite contrast is codependency, too needy, too possessive. So what we need to do is try the balance of what we call interdependence, interdependence, that healthy balance between codependency and independent and egoic independence. So code, the interdependence is understanding that we are, as individuals, the whole and complete, and we're sharing that complete, pure self, that complete whole self with someone else. So understand, no man's an island, we need each other, we are supporting each other, and one plus one equals a three when you're balanced and harmonious. So finding that nice equilibrium of not meeting someone, not, not being, uh, uh, you know, feel like without the other person, we are, we are nothing, but not feeling like, oh, we have so many walls that we shut everyone out and be a complete loner and be totally independent. That's not what I'm trying to do. So that cut is about finding that healthy uh, interdependence, the healthy union and harmony, uh, healthy mutual respectful relationships with others. All right? So uh, is it normal to pull yourself away from people with a feeling of being overpowered? So a lot of people, some people are very control freaks, right? They want to control you. They want to impose their shadow projections onto you, impose their preferences on you. What can you do, all right? Obviously, healthy boundaries need to be in place. But how do you have, how do you work on having healthy boundaries? Ooh, lover's cut. I think it's the third or fourth time this card has appeared. Every time in a reading like this, I always get multiple of the same card. So this card, first and foremost, this card is always about self-love first. All right, self-love to yourself. Self-love and self-care are not the same thing. Self-care is a component of self-love. So when you go to the spa to get a nice massage, that's self-care. 
right? So you self love is total acceptance of everything about yourself, all the imperfections, flaws, uh, you know, or all the uh, little nitty gritties about being human that you don't like your looks, your self esteem, your self worth, your self respect, your self confidence. Make sure you have all these down pat. And how do you have that? Is by doing. Again, 50% light work, 50% shadow work, all right? What is the shadow side? The shadow side is, again, from we are eternal infinite spirits at our core. We come from zero point source, the, from zero point source view, what you call the Godhead, a name arose by any other name, it was not sweet, it's that singularity, that oneness. From there, we speak into the realm of the reality, reality, polarity. So when you split, from that one, you get the vesicle Pisces, then this is the twin flame, male and female energies. All of us are male and females in this. And the more you split out, right, you get uh, many infinite parts. We are basically infinite portions and parts of that one got hit when we combine. So the shadow aspect is the yin and yang, right? Every Anytime you shine a light, you create a shadow, and the shadow will follow you. So it's a part of you. The shadow is your human side. The shadow is the limitations, the challenges that... You know, so let, let, let me reword it. Pain is inevitable as long as you're separated from God's source on the God head. There'll always be some kind of pain. Headaches, stomach ache, shoulder aches, physical pain, emotional pain, mental pain, spiritual kind of pain. Right? Pain will always exist in all kinds of forms. But suffering is a choice. Suffering is optional. Even though the pain is there, you may choose how you want to react. You may choose what actions to take. You may choose to have a different perspective, so the suffering may not be there even if you're in pain. In fact, some people find pain pleasurable. Right? That's why you have BDSN, you have masochism. Some people like that doings, there's physical pain. They find that pain very alluring or very addictive. So pain can be actually pleasure. Some people, you know, they are so ill-treated and abused by a toxic parent who hasn't healed these wounds. And so all they know is being bullied or ill-treated and they see it as normal, so they find abusive partners as adults and they and, and, and they're that's comfortable to them because that's all they know and they're not even consciously aware it's in their subconscious so the reason why when you have do light work and do positive affirmations your positive affirmations are only in their conscious mind the conscious mind is only 10 percent the remaining 90 percent is your, your your unconscious and your subconscious so if your unconscious and subconscious are always negative and always feel with lack that would then sabotage you over and over again. You see? So that's why it's important to clear and release and purge your shadows by first acknowledging them. By first saying, okay, I'm okay. I'm going to forgive myself. I'm a human being. I'm a spirit by having a human, temporal human experience. All feelings, whether positive or negative, all thoughts, whether positive or negative, come and go, come and go. Tomorrow will be a better day. Nothing stays the same. Not even a state of enlightenment. All right? So with that understanding, you, you acknowledge it and then release it. The only way is to, to have a breakthrough is to break, to break down first, to allow yourself to feel those feelings, to cry if you have to, to scream and shout, to journal. There's so many healthy ways of purging and releasing this uh, stuck and blocked uh, pain in you. Right? You can journal, you can swim, you can dance, you can do tapping, you can meditate, you can sing. There's so many ways of positive outlets. Be in nature. Right, uh, swim in the sea, get a salt bath, you can cinch and smudge yourself. So make sure you do light work and share the work. Go see a therapist for God's sake. All, be, all right? And yes, yeah, so much you can do So to, to, to do that. In fact, there's so many articles about how to do shadow work and how to, to you know, acknowledge the other half of us, dark side of the moon, right? So even the moon has a dark side. We all have a dark side. So it's accepting that the human flaws, the frailty, that, that we are mortals, that we will experience pain. Okay, can self-hypnosis help us gain more control of our spiritual? Hypnosis is a really powerful tool, actually. Hypnosis allows us to go deep into the subconscious and conscious to clear out all these blocks. It is shadow work. So I highly recommend hypnosis, really powerful tool. You can self-hypnotize even by going to YouTube and listening to a self-hypnosis track and going very deep, very deep in the into your subconscious. It's a very deep auto state of trance. Okay? So lots of articles and YouTube videos about everything that I've mentioned about from twin flames to shadow work, inner child healing. You all need to do this. It's way more important than your mundane day-to-day -day stuff. When you get these things in check, trust me, your day-to-day -day mundane stuff 
falls in effortless in the place. Your life will burst into a, to miracles and synchronicities up, down, left, right, everywhere. Your natural state is that of abundance. So when you feel like you're lacking something, what you have is an abundance of lack, right? So you're always abundant in something, always, all the time. So make sure that in order to purge out those negative stuff that's in you, that's blocking you, that's sabotaging you over and over, uh, make sure that you give rise to, you heal those inner child wounds, you, give, you heal those trauma and the pain so that you can have a chance to be acknowledged and cleared out. The only way is true to face those fears, to confront it, then it disappears. If you're not, it chases you through hell and back. All right? So it's, you're still carrying it. And you, when you carry that pain and that trauma, it, over time it crystallizes and intensifies into illness, ailments, diseases, cancers, and strokes. So only when you've given rise to it and healed it and released it can it then stop affecting, impacting you and sabotaging you in a negative way. All right? Anyone has any more questions? General questions? So I have a YouTube channel where I've uploaded over 200 videos on all kinds of spiritual topics from opening up the third eye to being more grounded, to dealing with shadows. Sometimes I'm solo in the videos, but more often than not, I'm interviewing an expert, lots of Aussie practitioners who I interview as well on all kinds of topics related to holistic wealth, health, well-being and wellness. So go to uh, my YouTube channel, search me, Luke Elijah. You search me, Luke Elijah, you'll find my, my channel and, and watch those videos. The, the support is there for you on all kinds of topics. I also have uh, an Instagram page, same name, Luke Elijah, and a Facebook profile. My personal Facebook page is already maximum capacity of 5,000 friends. I cannot add any more, uh, any of you, if you send me a request. So do do add me on my professional page by searching Luke Elijah Spirit, okay? So the links uh, has been placed. If you want a personal reading, you have personal private questions, book a private reading, book a private session, and we have all your questions answered. You get you tune into your spirit guides. You can ask as many questions as you want and get it all cleared and answered so that you can you know how to move forward, all right? Okay, so let's ask Spirit, what other tools and techniques can we use collectively? to better improve our lives right now. I have another five minutes with you guys. Ace of Pentacles, be more grounded. I, mean, I was talking about grounding, right? Go watch the video I did about how to be more grounded. You can be more grounded by uh, earthing, which is like placing your bare feet on the ground, but on the earth, and feeling a cord, roots growing from your feet, anchoring the mother earth. All right, uh, play with your pets, stroke your cat, play with your dog, uh, plant, a, plant a, some herbs and uh, flowers, plant a tree, right? Give back to the environment by, uh, you know, volunteering your time and energies in uh, cleaning up the ocean, cleaning up the beaches and shorelines, uh, you know, finding some a cause, environmental issue or cause or charity that you believe in and volunteering your time, your energy, your money to that. You know, most, uh, thank you so much for your birthday wishes. Thank you so much. <laughs> okay, so that's what we need to do. Uh, and that Mother Earth gives back to us by healing us as well. Okay? Nature is a very powerful healer, right? So uh, in that, when this connection, this grounded, anchored connection, allows us to be more in our body, remember you are spirit having a human experience. So send those negative thoughts, feelings, and emotions, send it down to Mother Earth to allow her to transmute that darkness back to like a spiritual alchemy, right? So it's like polishing a diamond. Diamond was first black coal. After lots of time and pressure and heat, it becomes sparkling diamond. So that this process of self-transformation and spiritual alchemy allows us to cultivate the virtues like compassion, empathy, uh, patience, forgiveness, self-love. Only We can only give what we have, so we have to encompass these qualities before we can help others. So as long as blind leading the blind, right? How can we assist others unless we have the experience and we hit ourselves first and we have it again? You can only give from an overflowing cup. You can only give when you yourself have it. Okay, 
So, so work on yourself, do the work, do the spiritual healing, do the emotional, mental healing uh, by honoring yourself, forgiving yourself first before you forgive anyone else. Uh, have more fun. Remember that, you know, find things like that and make you laugh. I, I, I swear, anytime you're feeling negative, what you need to do is pick up your phone, Google image search, cute fluffy baby animals, and see what you find. Guarantee you, whatever you see there will put a smile on your face. All right? But if you already have a pet, an animal, then spend time with that. And then help ground help grounds you. Accordingly to the Harvard uh, Medical Journal, the, the, the scientists uh, figured that and researched that the purring of a cat is very in tune with our human heartbeat. It actually heals us. All right? So that's why psychics and people who are sensitive and empaths, they love cats. They love having cats around them. Cats are very mystical, spiritual creatures. How many of you have cats? Okay, let's, let's pick a card for our cats. Oh, this card flew out. Oh, okay. Cats are very intuitive. So here's a super psychic. And they're also in tune to the lunar cycles. It's the moon. And cats will help us with our shadow. They help us heal our shadow. Is there one card to give us insight into the mind? So in the entire month, the first card that I picked today was spiritual science, right? I'm going to pick another card. What's so special about this month of September, especially on this full moon night? Okay, what's, what's going on? Perfect alignment, right? Be in alignment with yourself, all right? Find the harmony, the equilibrium, the uh, connection, the coming together, the, uh, the, the, the balance within yourself. When you are in alignment, again, remember the earlier card of aligning with your soul mission, your soul blueprint, what you're meant to do. When you have the alignment, everything falls in place effortlessly. Alignment of your body, mind, heart, and soul. Alignment of your thoughts, your feelings, with your inspired physical actions manifests into reality. Thank you, KB. I appreciate it. For all of you having your birthdays in September, this is a cut. Whoops! That's the cut, all right? Now, this is a companion to the moon that I just drew. Also, this is the high priestess, also another major arcana card. The high priestess for those of you born in the month of September who are Virgos. In fact, this is the card for Virgos, Virgo the Virgin, right? Uh, Virgo the Virgin, look at this, the high priestess. Um, shadow work, yin and yang, 50% light work, 50% shadow work, didn't I just tell you? Okay, a lot of you are meeting the twin flames. Twin flame numbers 11. Uh, uh, you see, you see, two and 11 are always pairs, right? So there's a lot of you see 11, 11, spiritual awakening time, spiritual twin flame mirroring numbers of 11, 11. Uh, so for you, if you're born in September, this is the time to tune into intuition. You're very super psychic, especially for this month. Tune into your gifts, your psychic abilities. Uh, you are powerful. You are. Great manifester, you are intuitive, you use your intuitive abilities, your gut instincts, your intuition to help yourself, help your journey, uh, go on great adventures tune by tuning in and the astral plane into your dream state, not just your waking state. And that will help you to make better situations, make better life, and help other people and serve better people, serve others better. Okay? So this is for you if you are born in the month of September. All right, I am now at 7 o'clock. I'm done with my timing. i see you guys next month. All the best and enjoy today's full moon. Namaste.